Hello everyone, in this video I'll be ranking the Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree bosses on a tier list as all the Remembrance bosses plus CURSE YOU BALE! So I'll be going through all of these, giving my thoughts because I beat the DLC a few days after it released and I had a whole lot of fun with it. So the first one that we have here is Divine Beast Dancing Lion. This was a interesting choice to receive a cutscene as there is not many bosses that got cutscenes and I think some others are much more deserving of the cutscenes, especially like Rolana. But the Divine Beast Dancing Lion was a pretty decent intro to the DLC. You don't have to do this boss first, but it's typically the one that most people are going to be doing at the start. It deals physical damage, frostbite damage, magic damage, and lightning damage it's an interesting one it's a very spectacle fight like the lightning coming down in the second phase is really exciting i would say overall it's probably b tier because we do have a lot of other fights in this game that are much better than it so i had a lot of fun with it but i think that the next one is a little bit better so we got relana the twin moon knight here now in the phase transitions it has a carry and slicer attack that it'll do and if you get hit with the first one you're probably dying to the second one and then it has the twin moon attack which if you don't get the jump down pat you'll bounce up in the air and get hit multiple times and die too so very challenging fight but i found it to be one of the more enjoyable ones and you get a really cool weapon that has both the magic and the mesmer fire on it so it has a cool remembrance item that you get from it, but the boss fight itself was incredible. And it's one of the few bosses that doesn't like charge right at you at the very start. Although it can use some magic attacks too. I think out of all the fights, this is one of the better ones because you get a, it's like a huge upgrade over Renala, um, similar style, but I'm going to put in the A tier because there are some other fights in this that were much better, I would say. So I will put Burana in the A tier, really great fight overall. Next, we got Mesmer the Impaler, and this was a great fight. Um, I found it equal in difficulty, I would say, to like Millennia, but uh, he rushes right at you, throws the spear at you right at the start, so it's actually hard to summon in your Mimic if you're going to be using that. You also get Horn Scent for this fight. Not as epic as Egon during Bale, but uh, he is pretty fired up, and I like that kind of energy that it brings to the fight. Mesmer's Arena was cool too, and even into the second phase when he turns into the big snake was awesome. I had a lot of fun with the Mesmer fight, and I'm excited to do it again. I have to say Mesmer is probably an S-tier boss fight. Um, I think the voice actor also did an incredible job. The lore behind Mesmer and the reason we're fighting him is interesting. He also seems kind of upset at his job. Like he's After you kill him, he curses Merica, and it seems like he just wanted to be held by Merica again. That seems like what the item lore is describing. He was the oldest of Mer America's children, and... He's kind of exiled to the Land of Shadow to keep the horn sent out and, and kind of keep things orderly there. But I almost feel bad for him out of all the demigods. Of course, he's kind of evil. Like, he's burning down. He's done a lot of, like, war crimes. Let's be honest. But Mesmer is a very interesting boss, and I'm glad that they added him into the DLC. I have to say, S tier, the fight was incredible. Full of spectacle, and the spear fight was awesome. Next, we got Commander Gaius. Now, this is, I think, a lot of people's kryptonite mine, too. The hitboxes on him are kind of janky, and I'm waiting for him to fix it because he'll charge at you with the boar. And even if you dodge it, you have a very good chance of still getting hit with this hitbox because the boar itself has a huge butt, and the butt has a hitbox, so it'll hit you. And I don't know how many times I had to do this boss fight, but I didn't love it. There's, like, some mounted bosses are really great, like uh, the Putrescent Knight, I feel like, was a little bit better in terms of its, its combat, but... I'm going to put Commander Guys in the F tier. I just feel like it wasn't that fun. It had the best boss arena, though. That is one of its saving graces. It could move it up to the C tier. Like, that arena is cool. Out, out back of the Shadow Keep, and you have, like, the, the luscious trees and things like that. I think it was a cool arena, but just not the coolest boss fight. It was challenging, but it didn't feel like it earned the challenge that it brought. So, yeah, I'm putting in the F tier. Not the best fight, I would say. Probably the weakest of the DLC. Next, we got the Shadow Tree Avatar, or some people call it the Skato Tree Avatar. This is a burnt sunflower. I unfortunately beat this on my first try, and I think it was a really cool boss. Like, in theory, a bur big burnt sunflower is awesome. And it had three phases where it keeps popping back up. The bleed damage that it deals is pretty intense, and some people get... It's really challenging for that, but... I brought the Blasphemous Blade out for this one, and it shredded it down. I probably should use a different weapon to make it a bit more fun, but I know for next time not to. I want to put that probably at the top of the B tier. It's a little bit better than Divine Beast Dancing Lion. I would say maybe A tier if it was a little bit more challenging. Um, and I'll see, I guess, in the next playthrough how challenging it will be. But it really depends when you fight it in the DLC and where you have your Shadow Tree Blessings. So 
it's all right. <laughs> I'll say B tier. Next, we got Curse You, Bale. Who the hell of our poods? This is a pure spectacle fight. I'm putting this above Mesmer. Bale was awesome. Now, not just the fight itself, like the lead up to it, all the lore behind it. When you talk to Florisax and finding out that he betrayed Dragon Lord Placidusax and just everything that involved this. And then you hike up the mountain and it's quite a fight to get up there. There's dragons fighting each other. You have to fight the dragon. When there's those two dragons fighting each other, you have to fight the one with the health bar. And then Egon's going to come out and cheer you on and be like, oh my God, you're a Drake warrior. And then when you get to Bale, you have Egon there and you can summon him in. And I highly recommend summoning Egon because he comes in screaming. And it's the most hype battle cries I've ever seen. It's pretty much like Captain Ahab against the Moby Dick. And yeah, it's pure spectacle of a fight. Bale is probably one of the best dragon fights I've ever seen in a, a Souls-like game too. He does fire and electricity damage, so bring both fire and electricity resistance talisman to make it a little bit easier, but I'm not normally a dragon fan. Like, I didn't like the dragon fights in the base game Elden Ring, but Bale, oh my goodness. Also, Bale has Placidusax's head spit into his neck and on his body. This is one of the most metal boss fights of all time. I seriously love the Bale fight. It was so good. Next, we have the Putrescent Knight. Now, this has a crazy 8-hit combo that it starts off with where it's like spinning around towards you and then the horse comes at you and then he comes at you again and the horse comes at you. That was a really cool attack combo. I see some people hating on this fight. It's not as bad as Commander Gaius. Um, he's actually very weak to Scarlet Rot. Gaius is too, but Gaius' health is way too high. The Putrescent Knight, I found, was fairly easy as long as you got the Scarlet Rod on and just played a little bit more defensive than you normally would. Its attacks were well telegraphed compared to Gaius's, And the hitbox is pretty pretty good on it too. The Putrescent Knight, not like the best fight I've ever encountered, but I would say it's an A-tier fight. It was pretty fun overall. Like I, I enjoyed it. And I think the combo at the start is probably the coolest combo that I've seen in a game. Uh, especially, I mean, for a horseback because mounted fights aren't typically the most fun when you're chasing them down, especially in Commander Gaius's efforts. Um, but the Putrescent Knight, super cool combos. Interesting arena, and itself, it's like this big bony dude. Very cool. Next we have Matir, Mother of Fingers. This was a decent fight for the weirdest questline that I think I've ever done in a From Software game. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a big fingers lots of hands and fingers together there it, it'll spawn in finger creepers but this is one that only took a couple attempts for me uh use the blasphemous blade again like anytime i brought the blasphemous blade out it wasn't that challenging i find um and i only had like 36 faith on the build that i ran through the dlc with so it did its it did its job but the the fight itself it had a cool arena it starts off with this like laser beam attack that shoots from the finger the main finger um I didn't love this fight. It was cool and all, but the it was just really weird. And I think it was, I think the other fights are a little bit better. So I'll put it in the C tier. I didn't hate the fight, but I just think some of the other ones are a little bit better. And I'm trying to keep this as balanced as possible. I would love to put everyone in the S tier, <laughs> except about Gaius. But yeah, we're keeping it there. Next, we got the uh, Lord of the Frenzy Flame. This fight was awesome now a lot of people were kind of guessing what the fight w that we saw in this dlc because we've seen the guy with the sword and he's like pulling it out of his head now i did not expect it to go full frenzy flame on us and the area before this is really cool the lead up with all the winter lantern looking enemies and then we make it to the manse and then we go through it all um i think that this fight was just an incredible fight i'm going to put it up in the s tier as well very interesting the lord of the frenzy flame i didn't think we were going to get this in this game but i'm so glad that we did the fight was itself was incredible like he does this like whirlwind attack that comes towards you and just a big glowing ball of madness was awesome and this is one of the few fights that i feel like with a like typically fights with different statuses are annoying like madness is so annoying to deal with bleed can be very annoying to deal with scarlet rock can be quite annoying to deal with but I found that this one wasn't that bad. It was actually more fun than anything, and uh, it didn't take me too many attempts, but uh, I found that Frostbite worked really well in this fight. So, yeah, S tier. Next, we got Romina, Saint of the Bud, and this is the Scarlet Rot fight for this game. It moves around quite a bit, but I didn't find it to be all that challenging compared to some of the other boss fights in this game, so... I don't know, Romina, I'd probably say A tier of a fight. Uh, I like the appearance of the boss. It was very interesting, and... 
there's a lot of little lore digging that people did in the reveal trailer there is someone that's getting burned by mesmer's fire and they have the romina uh the romina twin blade there which is likely romina before she transformed into this scorpion uh centipede creature and I believe that she may have discovered the Scarlet Rot or a piece of the Scarlet Rot that made its way to the Shadowlands. Um, and then that eventually would lead to Millennia potentially getting the Scarlet Rot, which is kind of interesting. So we'll have to wait till more lore gets dug up on this. But I think Romina was a really cool boss fight. And uh, yeah, of the plant or creature, the weird creature bosses, the Shadow Tree Avatar and Romina definitely didn't disappoint. Finally, we got. Radon, Promised Consort, and Radon, Consort of Mikola. Now, am I disappointed this is not Godwin? Yeah, I was hoping for Godwin. And we did get a little bit of Godwin in the Death Knight arenas. They had his face at the back of the wall. I was like losing my mind when I saw that because I had no idea. Um, but this fight, it's not bad. It's a hard fight. Probably one of the hardest fights that I've ever done in a video game. Uh, I had to use a shield build to be able to take him down. And I got a guide for that if you're stuck on this boss. Cause yeah, it took me quite some time to beat Radon, but, um, I don't know how to feel about it. Cause I was hoping for maybe some expanding on Godwin's lore and how Mikola tried to save him and give him a proper death. And then maybe that went wrong and we got him in the Shadowland. I thought that would have been how they took the DLC. That's how I was telling everyone the DLC was going to go. And then plot twist, Radon, Promise Consort. It's not terrible, but um, it's really hard, <laughs> which is fine. I want a challenge for the final boss of the DLC. B to C tier. I might just put in the B tier, um, bottom of the B tier. I don't know. Maybe it's better than the Divine Beast Dancing Line, but I don't know. I just feel like I wanted something different. So, yeah. That is my tier list of the best remembered bosses from Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree. I honestly think that Bale was probably my favorite fight in this DLC. Thanks to Egon. If we didn't have Egon, it'd still be probably an A tier fight, but Egon just made it so much better with the dialogue. I've never seen an NPC go that hard before. But overall, there's some really great bosses in this DLC. I'd encourage you to give it a shot if you're into this kind of game. So feel free to leave your comments, thoughts, concerns in the comments below where you think I should have ranked these. If you found this video fun or useful, please hit the subscribe button below and I'll see you all in the next video.